to God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your word. I just uh, surrender myself, Lord, and this word may it be edifying to us this morning. May it be light and life to each one. Uh, come and speak to us afresh, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so today we're looking at Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Just uh, these three verses. Uh, they're very familiar to most people. It says, uh, Habakkuk says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Or you can, or another version says, I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights or to tread on the high places. And uh, I'm not going to go into the context. The context is uh, the destruction of the context is the destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon and then the subsequent punishment to Babylon but the point that Habakkuk is making and that I want us to focus on today is how do we respond when the situation is so bleak and that and we see the bleakness of the situation in the in the description that Habakkuk has here the fig tree does not bud there are no grapes on the vines, the olive crop fails, the fields produce no food, there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls. And of course, this is an agrarian society, an agrarian community, and so you have everything possible failing. There is no fruit, there is no harvest, there is no livestock. Okay, so that is a picture that Habakkuk paints and he says that even if things are so bad, this is how I am going to respond. Okay. He says, yet I will rejoice. Okay. Yet I will rejoice. Even though all of these things happen, which basically refers to an, a complete destruction, devastation, a sense of utter despair. Okay. Uh, Somebody yesterday told me that a statistic that uh, every day 30 farmers in India commit suicide. Okay. Now they're facing this exact same situation. Their fields have failed, their crops have failed, or there's a drought, or they don't have the fertilizer, or their loans, in effect, their loans are too much, whatever it is. How do they respond to that desperation? They're committing suicide. I cannot even fathom what happens to their families, therefore who are, by the way, left with that debt and those loans and all of that, except they don't have the man now to take care of them. So it's an utterly desperate situation. And that is the picture that Habakkuk is painting. And he says, yet I will rejoice. And that is my, uh, that my title of the title of today's message is choosing joy. And we don't often realize this, but joy is supposed to be a key characteristic of the Christian life. So we have Paul saying, I think it is Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And where is he writing from? He's writing from prison. Okay. But of course, he's echoing something that Habakkuk said hundreds of years earlier. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And the point is this, of course, our joy is in God, not in our circumstances. Or our lack of joy is not because of our lack of good circumstances. He says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Or I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Okay? That's exactly what Paul says later. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Okay? Because it's not at all about our circumstances. So when we look at Habakkuk saying that I will rejoice in the Lord, there are four things that we can take out of this. Okay? 
what are we rejoicing in or who are we rejoice, rejoicing in? The first thing is this. We are rejoicing in who God is. I will rejoice in the Lord. Okay, we are rejoicing in who God is, in his eternal nature. Okay, so the first thing we rejoice in is in that which is eternal, unchanging. God was always this way. God will always be this way. Who God is, his nature and character. You know, if you boil it down to two words, it's love and power. Everything about God comes down to this, love and power. Okay. And it's so interesting because I've been doing this uh, devotion, which has one verse and then I, I write and I don't know whether that will become my next devotional because I'm writing, I'm literally writing a devotion for each of those verses. But at the moment, I'm just writing it for, for myself. But in these 20, 28 days, at least four times the verse has been about joy. And in fact, one of the verses was verse 18, this particular verse. And I wrote, he is worthy of our joy. We think of God as worthy of our respect, adoration, honor, reverence. He is worthy of our joy because of his nature. He is good, gracious, loving, merciful, compassionate. He accepts us, loves us, cares for us. But he is also almighty, powerful, sovereign, omnipotent. And at the same time, despite being all those things, he is yet so loving, so kind and so compassionate. He is holy, yet he stoops down to embrace and save wretches like us. And therefore, there is no limit to the aspects of his nature that cause us, in fact, compel us to rejoice in him. So that's the first thing, something eternal, who God is. When we say rejoice in the Lord, we rejoice in who God is, his nature. Okay? Secondly, he says, I will be joyful in God my Savior or in the God of my salvation. We rejoice in what God has done. So that's the past. There's the eternal, now there's the past. We rejoice in what God has done. Okay? And that's actually still an aspect of who God is because what God does is integral to who he is. God is loving because he is love. God is our salvation because he is the savior. It comes out of his nature. Okay? God's nature is revealed in his actions on our behalf. And so in a sense, when we are rejoicing in him for what he has done, we are still rejoicing in who he is, but it becomes more concrete in that sense. Yeah. As I said, the word is savior or God of my salvation because he saves us. That's what he does because he is our savior. He has saved us, delivered us, rescued us, set us free. All of us can look at, at the past and see the ways in which God has been our savior and we can say yes he is the god of my salvation you know practically everything that god does comes down to freedom he sets us free from sin he breaks the power of addiction he forgives us he heals us in that he's setting us free from disease he restores the relationship he's setting us free from dysfunction you know so we can always look back on him as a Savior. Even when we say Redeemer, what is rede redeeming us? Saving us from the clutches of somebody who had us in his control. Yeah? Of course, you can think of it in many other ways, but we rejoice in who God is, his eternal nature. We rejoice in what he has done. We look at the past and we rejoice. And, and so often, I mean, the Bible is full of that, isn't, isn't it? The Psalms especially are constantly talking about what God had done for his people, especially looking back to the Exodus, looking back to the Red Sea, looking back to the, the provision in the wilderness and how he, how he gave them the promised land and things like that. Yeah. So that's the second thing. We are rejoicing in what God has done. That is the past. Secondly, we rejoice in what God is doing. That is the present. You know, Habakkuk says, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go tread on the heights. And that contrast of the heights with what was there before. Okay, because when we, have, when we are in a state of, you know, where that depressing situation, 
that despair of hopelessness which he describes earlier all of this the situation was so dire okay all of that can of course bring us down it does bring us down we are depressed we are low we are down there we are disappointed we are discouraged uh, we are upset with god all of those things but what does habakkuk say the sovereign lord makes me to tread on the heights of course the picture is of a mountain deer he makes my feet like the feet of a deer swift and sure that i can now go on high places i am lifted up from that place where i was down because of my circumstances and therefore i can rejoice in what he is doing right now he is lifting me up from that situation that i was in he may not change the situation but he is changing my position he makes me tread on the heights okay how does he do that he becomes our strength it says the sovereign lord is my strength because when we are low when we are depressed we are also weak in our weakness we acknowledge that god himself is our strength i can't pull myself out of this place i can get, i can't get out of this pit but the sovereign lord is my strength he is the one who lifts me up he enables me us to rise above our doubts and fears all of those things that come in no when things go wrong those doubts the fears our questions the issues that we have with god why is my prayer not being answered whatever those things are he lifts us up above those things he gives us strength to rise above our circumstances now maybe some day they will change but god is not even waiting for them to change he is lifting us up and therefore we can rejoice in what god is doing in the present in us for us even if that dire circumstance is not changing habakkuk is saying all of these things will be true yet i will rejoice because of who god is because of what god has done he is the god of my salvation because of what god is doing he is my strength and he is lifting me up and enabling me to tread on the heights and finally we rejoice because of what god has said he will do and that is the future we have that which is eternal that which is past that which is present and also that which is future god has spoken now in this particular situation god has spoken to habakkuk okay so in for example the previous verse chapter 3 verse 16 before all of this habakkuk says i heard and my heart pounded my lips quivered at the sound decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled yet i will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come upon the nation invading us okay so habakkuk if you read the whole if you read the whole book habakkuk first complains about uh, the the state of judah look how how bad things are god your people are behaving so badly god says i'm sending babylon to punish you guys and then habakkuk says what you're punishing a sinful nation to you you you're sending a sinful nation to punish us and they're going to treat us so badly how can you use these people god says don't worry i'm going to punish them also because babylon was going to go way beyond what god had commanded them to do to his people they were going to deal with such cruelty the god said i'm going to punish i'm going to punish babylon as well and so habakkuk says okay i will wait patiently for what for your word to come to pass it was still a future word it would come to pass almost 70 years later in habakkuk's case even longer than that but his confidence his trust and his therefore his joy was in what god had spoken okay and similarly our trust and our confidence and our joy has to be in what god has spoken not what we can see god has said his kingdom will come god has said that the whole earth will be filled with his glory as the waters cover the sea and so when we look around us and we see things so bad god is saying you can still rejoice because i have spoken 
and what I have said will come to pass. And Habakkuk is able to rejoice, even though things are so bad in Judah, even though the Babylon, Babylonians are going to come and destroy Judah, even though there is no sign of any punishment for the Babylonians, he says, yet I will rejoice. Because God has spoken and that future will come to pass as he has spoken. Because again, another word from Habakkuk is the righteous will live by faith. That famous verse is also from Habakkuk. Because we live by faith, not by sight. And therefore we see a very close connection between joy and faith. We will not have joy if we do not have faith. Faith in a person, God himself. Faith in him because of what he has done in the past. Faith that he is doing something right now with us. And faith in his word for the future. But when we have all of, when we have all of those things, we will rejoice. That's what Habakkuk is doing here. He is choosing to rejoice even though the circumstances are completely opposite. And he says, even though they get worse, even though all of this happens, it had not happened yet. Even though all of these things happen, yet I will rejoice. And, you know, as I was, uh, I mean, I prepared this yesterday and uh, this morning I wanted to hear something. So I, I heard, a, and I didn't go to, I didn't hear any sermon on Habakkuk. I decided to hear a sermon by Bill Johnson. He, he was doing some conference somewhere. It's called Victory. I thought it was going to be a victorious, rousing kind of sermon. Anyway, so I, I was hearing that this morning. And he spoke about, he shared about how the whole family was around his wife when she was about to die. And it had been a year or two or more that she had been sick. And they had been, of course, praying for healing. And they had they'd got words of healing and prophetic words of healing and all of that. And they declared all of those things, but God did not heal her. And finally, the point came where, and they, she said we were, the blessing was that we were all there. And I was sitting at her side when she finally took her last breath. Okay? And he said, when that happened, I lifted my hands and I started praising God for being the healer, even though he had not healed my wife. And I realized then that he was doing this, he was rejoicing in who God is. God did not stop being healer because he did not heal his wife. So he said, consciously, we thanked and praised God as the healer because that nature of his did not change. It's eternal. Even though the circumstance or our experience may be something else. You know, and that really struck, I, I thought that's exactly what we're saying here. That's exactly what Habakkuk is saying. And I can just imagine Habakkuk, maybe in that situation, praising God for being the provider, praising the Lord of the harvest, praising the one who gives abundant, abundantly, praising the one who gives the rain and causes the crops to rise and all of those things, even though it's not happening in that situation. But really the most crucial phrase I believe in this whole verse is, I will. I will. I will rejoice. No, it's a deliberate choice. It's intentional. Otherwise, joy is an emotion that just happens because something good happens. And it's almost automatic. No, I get a, I get, get a good result. I don't have to be told to rejoice. I can't help rejoicing. Some, somebody I love visits us, rejoice. Get a good job, rejoice. There's so many reasons why we rejoice and it, it's automatic, it's spontaneous. There's no intention, there's no thought behind that. And of course that's, that's natural and that's wonderful. But here Habakkuk says, I will rejoice. I will choose to. It will be deliberate, it will be intentional 
because we have enough and more reasons to rejoice in God far more than in our circumstances. We have amazing reasons to rejoice because of who God is, because of what he has done, because of what he is doing and because of what he will do according to his word. You should be rejoicing far more spontaneously if we are constantly aware of God and what he is up to. But we don't and so we have to choose to do it. Therefore, choose joy. And Lord Jesus, you promised your disciples that that you would make our joy complete. We are sorry, Lord, for so often just being such a joyless community, Lord. Allowing the circumstances to bring us down, and burden us, and take our eyes off you. We thank you, Lord, for this reminder from the prophet that there are so many reasons, countless reasons, to rejoice in you. We just have to make that choice. So Lord, as best as we know how today we say we choose to rejoice. We choose joy over everything that the world and the devil uh, try to cause us to do instead. And Holy Spirit remind us whenever we are, we are getting down Lord uh, to rejoice in you, in who you are, in what you've done, and what you are doing, and what you will do according to your word. Just come, Holy Spirit, fill us with that spirit of joy. May we be known for our joy, Lord. Let joy be released in us and through us. In Jesus' name. Amen.